22, Touring Our Solar System. The solar system includes the Sun, nine planets and their satellites, asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. So here's a little map of our solar system with the Sun in the middle, and Mercury and Venus and the Earth, and then Mars and our asteroid belt, and Jupiter and Saturn, then Uranus, Neptune, and then the Kuiper belt. So the planets, the planet you see Earth, as an example of the Earth, is one AU from the Sun. Its orbit is one year. Okay? And then this ecliptisty, so how different from a circle the Earth's um, orbit orbit is. Okay? So in comparison to Venus, it's like three quarters, it's like one quarter of the way closer to the Sun than we are. Mercury is like forty percent um, of the distance from the Earth to the Sun from the Sun. Okay. The planets are farthest out, or like Neptune, it takes 30 of Earth's distances from the Sun to get to as far out as, as Neptune is. Okay. In the orbital period, uh, Mercury uh, has like four years for every one of our years. Okay. Uh, Mars, its orbit is almost two years long, Earth years long. Jupiter is almost 12 Earth years long. Okay. One year in Neptune is like 165 Earth years. Okay, so the planet's orbit lies in an orbital plane, similar to a flat sheet of paper. The orbital plane of the planets are inclined. Planes of seven planets, and seven of the planets lie within three degrees of the sun's equator. Mercury is inclined at seven degrees, and Pluto is inclined at 17 degrees. The two groups of planets are in solar system. The terrestrial or Earth-like planets include Mercury through Mars. They're small, dense, and rocky. They have very low escape velocity, so the gravity isn't so great, that it's terribly, so it's not terribly hard to launch a rocket off, off the um, Earth or Mercury, Venus, or Mars's orbit on planet and break the orbital um, gravity. The Jovian planets, or Jupiter-like planets, Jupiter through Neptune, large, low-density, gaseous planets. They're massive, uh, very thick atmosphere because of hydrogen, helium, and methane, and ammonia, and a very high escape velocities. If you land your spaceship on one of those planets, it would be very hard to launch off of one of those planets. It's not gravity. So the terrestrial planets, you see the inside of what you know, our Earth to look like, the rocky crust, the mantle, the metallic core, and inner core. Okay. The moon may have a fairly similar uh, structure. Uh, Mars as well, we expect Venus, and, and Mercury. All have very similar rocky structures. The Jovian planets, uh, we have layers of, of uh, visible clouds. And then gaseous hydrogen, and liquid hydrogen, metallic hydrogen, and a rocky core. Um, and, and most outer planets, uh, instead of uh, the rocky, well, instead of some of these other layers, we have layers of ices, water, and methane. Okay, planets drawn to scale. The Earth's actually fairly small. Earth and Venus are very similar in size. Mars is a little bit smaller, and Mercury is smaller yet. But Jupiter is our largest planet, and Saturn. Uranus and Neptune. Planets are composed of gases, hydrogen, and helium. Okay. And the rocks we find are silicate minerals and metallic iron. Planets are also composed of ices. So those ices we might find on plants with ices are ammonia ice, methane ice, carbon dioxide ice, and water ice. The okay. nebular hypothesis. It's how how these plants evolve. This plant formed about 5 billion years ago. The solar system condensed with gaseous nebula as the plants formed, the materials that closed them separated by density. So the dense metallic elements, iron and nickel, sank towards their centers. The lighter elements, silicate minerals, hydrogen, oxygen, migrated towards their surfaces. This process is called chemical differentiation. Due to surface gravities, Venus and Earth retain atmospheric gases. Due to frigid temperatures, the Jovian plants contain a high percentage of ice. Okay, Earth's moon. Its general characteristics, its diameter is about 2,100 miles. It is unusually large compared to its parent planet. Its density is 3.3 times that of water, so it seems a little more dense than basalt, which is about 3. Compared to Earth's crustal rocks, um, uh, so it's parallel to Earth's crustal rocks, perhaps the moon has a small iron core. Okay. Gravitational attraction is one-sixth of the Earth's. There's no atmosphere. There's uh, tectonics no longer active. The surface is bombarded by micrometeorites from space, which gradually smooth out the landscape. Okay, so here's a telescopic view of the moon. Okay, so we have these 
lighter colored pockmarked highlands. And then we have these smoother dark areas of the, um, the seas of Mare Emery and Mare Tranquility. Okay, here's a large Copernicus crater. Here's Kepler's crater. So the two types of terrain, the Marier or Mare, are, are the seas, or the dark regions of fairly smooth lowlands. They originate from asteroid impacts and then lava flooding the surface. Then the highlands are bright, densely cratered regions, make up most of the moon, make up all the black backside of the moon as well, and they're older than the Maria. The craters are the most obvious features on the lunar surface. These craters are produced by impact meteoroid, which produces ejecta, the occasional rays, which is associated with younger craters. So here's a process of, of a crater being formed with a meteorite making impact, causing a compressional wave, and the material is starting to be ejected. Okay, so then we have all a uh, whole bunch of material. Now, now more of the explosions going on, so more of the materials being ejected. You can see all this cracking and fracturing of the rocks below. And the heat from the impact is going to cause uh, some of the rock to start to melt and start flowing through those fractures. We've got from this upwelling in the center. The ejecta is starting to settle all around the crater. The lava is starting to actually flow uh, into the center of the crater. Okay, then um, as the more, more particles end up landing close, some of the particles really start spreading way out in this ejected blanket. The raised rim um, is where a lot of particles uh, have been deposited here in the deformation of the rock below raised up this rim. So here's an actual picture of, of um, a 20 kilometer wide crater on the moon. So here's its central peak, its raised rim. Okay, here's our ejected blanket. Okay. So continues ejected here. This continues to eject this more splatter. Uh, and here's here's a uh, here's a ray of material that you know, out this way. Okay. Now on the surface of the Earth is lunar regular. It covers all lunar terrains, gray, unconsolidated debris, composed of igneous rocks, breccia, glass beads, fine lunar dust, a soil like later layer produced by meteoric bombardment. Lunar history. Hypothesis suggests a giant asteroid collided with Earth to produce the moon. Older areas have a higher density, younger areas are still smooth. The moon evolved in three phases. The original crust is the highlands. As the moon formed, the outer shell melted, cooled, and solidified and became the highlands, about 4.5 billion years old. Then the formation of the Marriott Basins, those are younger than the highlands, between 3.2 and 3.8 billion years. And then the formation of the raid craters, material ejected from the craters still visible. For example, Copernicus Crater is a raid crater. So here's Copernicus Crater, this ejected blanket, and there's rays all out around that crater. Also, Kepler Crater still has some, some rays, too. Okay, so um, there's a large impact basin. Now, this happens how the area is formed. We have a big impact, and uh, there's such cracking and faulting that the magma flows and it fills in that crater, nice smooth, um, nice smooth crater surface. Now Mercury, the innermost planet, second smallest planet, has no atmosphere, has cratered highlands like the moon, vast, also vast smooth terrains, very dense, revolves quickly, and it rotates slowly. So here's, here's Mercury, it's kind of similar to the moon, it also has these very crater appearance on it. Venus, the second to the moon of brilliance in the sky, Similar to Earth in size, density, location of the solar system, it's shrouded in very thick clouds. It's impenetrable, these clouds, by visible light. The atmosphere is 97% carbon dioxide. So the surface temperature pressure, I'm sorry, the surface atmospheric pressure is 90 times that of the Earth. The surface we can map by radar. The features are 80% of the surface of subdued plains that are mantled by volcanic flows. Low density of impact craters, so not that many impact craters. Tectonic deformation must have been active during recent geologic past, and there are thousands of volcanoes. So here is a uh, radar-generated map of Venus with all those, those clouds. Mars is called the red planet. Its atmosphere is 1% as dense as the Earth's, primary, primarily made of carbon dioxide. It's a cold polar temperature, minus 193 degrees Fahrenheit. The polar caps and water ice covered by a thin layer of frozen carbon dioxide. Extensive dust storms with winds up to 270 kilometers per hour. There are num numerous large volcanoes. The largest is Mons Olympus, which is the largest volcano in the solar system. 
Less abundant impact craters with tectonically dead in the several canyons. Some are larger than Earth's Grand Canyon. The Valles Marineris is the largest canyon, I believe, in the solar system as well. Uh, Olympic Mars Mons is uh, larger than a western uh, state in the United States. It's a humongous uh, shield-like volcano. The gullies and canyons in Mars. Okay. The surface, it looks like there's stream drainage patterns found in some valleys. No bodies of surface water on the planet at this point. Um, possible origins of these valleys, past rainfall maybe, or surface material collapses, and subsurface ice melts. Uh, it has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Uh, those are captured asteroids. Jupiter is the largest planet, very massive, 2.5 times more massive than combined masses of all the planets, satellites, and asteroids in our solar system. It had been 10 times larger would have been a small star. Rapid rotation, slightly less than 10 hours, or basically spins on its axis, slightly bulged in the equatorial region from that spin. And the structure atmosphere through these belts of clouds, through these dark clouds, alternating with bright clouds. And between them, the pressure gradient must be very strong, so very strong winds. Okay, and then we have this uh, uh, storm on the side of the planet. It to always be there. It's a band of the parents, multicolored. The bands are lined parallel to Jupiter's equator, generated by the wind systems. The great red spot in the planet's southern hemisphere is a counterclockwise rotating cyclonic storm. The structure surface is thought to be a gigantic ocean of liquid hydrogen. Halfway into the interior, pressures cause liquid causes liquid hydrogen to turn to liquid metallic hydrogen, and rocky metallic material probably exists in the central core. The moons, it has at least 28 moons. The four largest moons that were discovered by Galileo with his, with his telescope, and we call those the Galilean satellites. Each has its own character. Callisto is the outermost Galilean moon. Europa is the smallest. Ganymede is the largest. And Io is the innermost Galilean moon, and it's also volcanically active. So here's Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Saturn, similar to Jupiter in its atmosphere, composition, and internal structure, but has rings around it, its most prominent feature. Also discovered by Galileo in 1610, very complex structure to those rings. They're composed of small particles or little moonlets that orbit the planet. Most rings fall into one of two categories based on density. Not to be debris ejected from moons, the origin is still debated. So here's Saturn with its, which is really nice, uh, rings in orbit. One of the features is a dynamic atmosphere, large cyclonic storms similar to Jupiter's Great Red Spot. There's 30 named moons. Titan is the largest Saturnian moon, second largest moon after Jupiter's Ganymede in the solar system, and substantial atmosphere. Uranus and Neptune are nearly twins. So, uh, Uranus rotates on its side, uh, has rings, its large moons have varied terrains. And Neptune's dynamic atmosphere, one of the windiest places in the solar system. It's a great dark spot, white cirrus-like clouds above the main cloud deck. There's eight satellites. Triton, largest Neptune moon, its orbit is opposite in direction that all the planets travel. The lowest temperature in the solar system at 391 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen with a little methane, volcanic-like activity, composed largely of water ice covered with layers of solid nitrogen and methane. Now the asteroids most lie between Mars and Jupiter. They're small bodies. The largest one is Ceres, about 620 miles in diameter. It's not very eccentric orbits. Okay, so they're not very round and extremely elliptical. Many of the recent impacts on Moon and Earth were collisions with asteroids. They're highly irregular in shape, and their origin is uncertain. So here's, here's the asteroid belt. Okay. And uh, some, um, some very um, Erratic orbits are these, are these red orbits here. Comets, often compared to large, dirty snowballs. Composition, frozen gases, rocky metallic materials. Frozen gases vaporize when near the sun, produce a glowing head called a coma. Some may develop a tail that points away from the sun due to radiation pressure and the solar wind. So here's an uh, incoming comet, well, actually coming this way, and its ion tail. Its tail will always be pointing away from the sun as it travels. Here's a nice picture. Here's a coma of the comet and ionized gases um, for the, the tail. The origin, not well known, but from a great distance from the sun. Most famous short period comet is Halley's Comet, has a 76 year orbit period. 
of the tail shaped nucleus. Now, meteoroids called, called meteors when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. A meteor shower occurs when Earth encounters a swarm of meteoroids associated with the comet's path. Me meteoroids are referred to as meteorites when they're found on Earth. Me types of meteorites are classified by their composition. The irons are mostly iron, they're 5 to 20 percent nickel. Stony are silicate mi minerals with inclusions of other minerals. And stony irons are mixtures. And carbonaceous chondrites are rare. Composition is simple or simple amino acids and other organic material. These carbonaceous chondrites may give us idea as to composition composition of Earth's core and give an idea possibly to the age of the solar system. A new class of plants are dwarf planets. They orbit the sun, not the only objects to occupy their area of space. Pluto is a prototype of this new category. Located in the Kuiper Belt is a band of icy objects found beyond the orbit of Neptune. Blue is not visible in the unaided eye, discovered in 1930, now classified as a dwarf planet. Its moon, Charon, was discovered in 1978, average temperature is minus 210 degrees Celsius. Okay, so here we have a little chart showing uh, um, uh, the plants and their, and their moons by gravity increasing in this direction and solar heating, okay, in this direction. Okay, so higher temperatures are closer to the Earth, I mean closer to the Sun. So we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and Moon get the most solar energy, and their gravity is yeah, kind of in the middle range. The asteroids have very little gravity, um, so all these other moons are not all that big. Much more gravity, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune.